first of all, to build a um, to build a causal loop diagram, we're going to use modules, and modules are the fifth tool here at the top. It's a it's a box normally that has rounded edges. But we're, we want it to just be a name so that we can look at a traditional causal loop diagram. To do that, we go into the model preferences. And in the model preferences, we choose name only modules. And now when I drop a module, it will have just a name. And the name that I will give it is we are going to look at housing supply. And we are going to look about how that reacts, how that inter interacts, I should say with housing demand and how that interacts with housing price. So as we build our causal loop diagram, we'll be using the connector. And the connector is right here and allows us to say, OK, well, supply affects price. How does it affect price? Supply affects price. As supply goes up, price goes down. So we will right click on the connector and we will choose polarity, and we will choose um, minus, opposite. As supply goes up, price goes down. So that's a negative connection. And as price goes down, um, supply will go down. So that's in the same direction. We would call that a plus. Now, by default, we use plus or minus here, but some people prefer S for same direction and O for opposite direction because uh, it's sometimes clearer. And if you want to do that, under the model preferences, you can just choose to use lettered polarity, and we'll get the S and the O instead. W I prefer the uh, plus or minus, so we'll stick to that for now. So we have what's called a balancing feedback loop here, and we can mark that with a label by putting a text box here and opening the text box by double clicking and choose this button, Format for Cause Loop Diagram, and press OK. When I do that, it, it assumes it's going to be a reinforcing loop, and it puts a plus sign, which is the traditional symbol for reinforcing. I prefer the B for balancing and R for reinforcing, so I'll, I'll just change that, and I'll, I'll number this loop also. I'll, I'll call this loop 1. On the demand side, as um, demand goes up, housing price goes up, so that would be polarity plus, and as price goes up, demand goes down, so that would be a minus. So let's label that also another balancing loop. I'll just copy that, and I will paste it over here. I'm using the command key equivalents, but in the edit menu, we've copy and paste right here. And I'll renumber that too. And finally, um, how do demand and supply directly interact? Well. As demand goes up, people are going to be uh, consuming that supply, so the supply will go down. So that is an opposite direction as well. And that gives us one more loop here, which I will paste on this thing back in again, and we'll call that loop three. That is our dynamic hypothesis. Under some circumstances, we also would like to look at um, exogenous inputs changing this, in which case I would use a converter, um, and we can implement what we call name-only converters to do this. A converter normally has a circle attached, but if I go into model prefs, I can choose name-only converters here to draw causal loop diagrams, or I can right-click on the diagram and choose name-only converters here. And I can say, okay, let's say interest rate. Interest rate is an exogenous input that's going to affect demand as interest rate goes up, demand will go down, and so that's a, a minus relationship. So I could do this. In this case, I'm not going to do this. I've, I've actually put interest rate inside my housing demand module, so we won't do that. So here's our dynamic hypothesis that we hope explains our reference mode. We can actually walk through this and see that it does. We don't have time to do that today, but we can walk through and see that, that this does adequately explain the uh, reference mode that we had before, except for the uh, defaults, because there's no there are no mortgages in this in this in this uh, dynamic hypothesis at this point. But we want to start small. So now we want to build a model. When we want to build a model. The nice thing about using modules here is I can then go into here and I can go to the model press, and I can say I can turn off name only modules, 
and I can start building my model directly from here in pieces. I can build housing supply first. I, uh, I'm just moving the names to the middle. I'm holding down the control key and I'm dragging the name to the middle because I like that feature. And um, I can start building my model from here. Before we do that, though, let's go over a couple of things. So there are several icons that we use to look at modules. Um, the first one you've already seen is the module icon, and the modules are connected. In this case, demand is connected to supply with a connector. And that means that I can take values from within the module housing demand, and I can use those values in housing supply. In order to use a, mo a value in housing demand, though, I have to say that this is something I want to be used as an output that other people can access, that other modules can, can uh, read. So otherwise, every variable would, it would pollute the space, would look very awful. So I specifically choose which variables inside housing demand I want to, um, that I want to use for uh, using other modules. So in this case, I have a variable called demand that I implemented as a converter instead of as a stock. Um, and I made that a module output in housing demand. In housing supply, I have to, which is going to take that value, I need a variable that actually takes that value. And so I have a variable that I place in there called demand. And I've marked it as a module input. And we'll see how to do that in a minute. And when it's marked as a module input, that means it'll take a value from somewhere else. It has this bold line around it that says, OK, this I know is going to come from someone else, but it isn't connected yet. So it's unconnected, but I want it to be connected at some point. So the bold just reminds me I need to go back and do something I'm not done yet. Uh, and in fact, if we try to run that model at a higher level, it, it won't run. But it, in the module, it will run. Um, once I assign it, it appears like a ghost with a thicker line. It is, in fact, essentially a ghost of demand for houses. You'll notice the name has the name of the module, a dot, and then the name of the variable. So the module's housing demand, the variable's demand for houses. So this variable is now assigned, this input, which was up here, is now assigned to housing demand dot demand for houses. So you'll see that those icons as we work through this. Let's go back. And so here is our model, more or less. If I were to start building this, I would start by um, trying to define these modules. And you've noticed I've gone from map mode to model mode. So it's telling me I have some things I need to do. I need to, uh, there's no models been imported here. And there are some entities that are invalid here. So let me um, assign a module to this. If I were building this from scratch, the scratch, the first thing I would do is I would create the model that goes in here. And when I do that, I would give it a name. And I'll call it housing price. I mean, housing supply, sorry and save it. And what that did, by the way, is that put it in a folder called modules. And so this folder modules exists in the same folder as my model. This is my model, supply and demand. And these are my modules. When I send a model to someone else, my model is not just a single file anymore. It is the single file plus the folder of modules. So if I want someone else to use my model, I need to send them both of those pieces or it won't work. So now that I've imported that, it's just an empty model. And I can start building it just as I would build any model. And I can say, OK, this is um, houses available or whatever. Um, and then I have an inflow of uh, construct constructed houses, right? Whatever I want to call it, doesn't matter. And I have, you know, my real estate turnover, right? So new things, and those are houses available, and somehow demand affects it. We're not going to build the model. We don't have time to do that in this, in this uh, session. But what we will do is I've already built this model. So I'm going to, uh, to reopen this module, by the way, I'm holding down the control key. And I'm double clicking to get to the dialog, because a double click just opens it. I'm going to actually import a model that I've already built for this. And it's right here. It's an ITM file. And of course, we want to replace it.